Hi everyone, it's Monica, and welcome back to Taylor Made Cards for You. Well, it's the beginning of the month, so you know what that means. It's time for another page in my beginning art journal series. Now, it being July, you know I'm going to have to make an Independence Fourth of July page. And what better way to create a page than using this fun paper doll from Tim Holtz? So to begin, I started with some uh, washi tape that had a postal theme. Uh, postal theme, for some reason, always screams America to me. Um, it has the red and the blue um, colors in it, and I think it's a great combination um, for any type of Independence Day card or just if you're trying to use an American theme. One thing that I really like about working with washi tape is that it is not very sticky. So when I'm trying to create some sort of a crisscross pattern, I can easily lay my tape down, but then I can lift it up and stick it underneath some of the pieces. Um, so what I typically will do is I'll just kind of get my design in order. And then once I have my uh, design, then I'll go back through and I'll lift up some of the pieces. So that way some of the pieces that I had um, over some of the tape actually go underneath some of the lines that are going horizontal. Washi tape is very forgiving and I think that's why a lot of us use it uh, when we're cutting out some of our die cuts as well. It will uh, be sticky enough to hold something in place, yet it's forgiving enough where you can lift it up and it won't tear any of your paper. So once I was happy with the placement of my washi tape, I did want to go ahead and kind of secure it into place using some clear gesso. Now I could have easily used some white gesso, but unfortunately I didn't have any. So the clear gesso worked just fine. It did give me a little bit of a uh, softer tone, even though it wasn't the clear white that you typically might see um, when people are creating their journal pages. Now the gesso works in a couple of ways for me. It not only secures my washi tape in place um, so it won't lift up, but it also uh, gives my service a nice clean slate so that way when I'm adding my color, um, it will um, hold it really nicely. So after I dried my gesso, I did get out my distress crayons and I outlined some of that washi tape. Because I am going for a Independence Day theme, um, I'm working with the red and the blue colors. Now, as you can see, I created my red stripes using my red distress crayon, and then I also added some white distress crayon for my white stripes. And then I'm using a uh, wet baby wipe to smear my colors. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh my goodness, what are you doing? You're smearing all of your reds and your whites. But um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that I like grungy work. 
Um, so I didn't want my stripes to be completely perfect and um, I really was going for the grungy look. I wanted my flag to look worn and distressed. So that's exactly what I was working for, uh, working towards when I was using that baby wipe. All right, so of course I wanted to add some texture to my, um, my page. So I got out my um, distress paste along with a stencil and my um, palette knife along with my old credit card. The credit card I use often because it has a really nice flat surface and it easily helps me to spread my texture paste. Now one thing you have to be careful of is uh, when you are working with texture paste in your stencil, this isn't something you can just put aside to dry because it will um, dry really hard and then your stencil really won't uh, be as useful as when it was new. So that is the one thing that you wanna make sure you clean after you use it. Um, typically I'll have a baby wipe um, and I can easily clean off my palette knife um, with my baby wipe. Um, and then sometimes also if I'm real good about um, scraping some of the excess uh, the excess paste off of my stencil, I can easily use my baby wipe to clean it up as well. But the best solution, of course, is always soap and water. All right, so now comes the fun stuff. So one of the newer products that I picked up um, last month were these uh, diffusion uh, powders. And that's really what they are. They're powders that you can uh, put onto your paper and spritz and they turn into ink. Now. When I bought these, I thought they were actually shakers, but it turns out they weren't. So what I did is I just took my uh, poker and I poked some holes into the top of the cap so that way I can turn them into shakers myself. And then um, they're really easy to use. All you need to do is just shake them onto your canvas or your paper or whatever you're working with and then spritz it with water. And you can see you get this really cool uh, effect. Um, I like using these with texture paste because then you'll have all of the um, grooves that your ink can run through and it really creates a random uh, effect and that's really what I like. Now when you're using these diffusions and spraying it with water, your paper is going to get really saturated. So I like to have some paper towels on hand or even this cloth like I'm using right here um, to dry off some of the excess water. Um, you want to definitely use your heating tool in between um, spritzes so that way it doesn't saturate your paper too much and just become a runny mess. Um, and then of course if you have too much water, um, like I use my paper towel, you can easily just roll it over and it will pick up that excess water for you. Okay, so once I was finished spritzing, I put it aside so I can start working on my images. Now the stamps that I'm working with today are from Carabella. I'm using the, um, what am I using? I'm using the American flag. And then the Liberty Bell is from I Break for Stamps. And the paper that I'm gonna be stamping on today is the Tim Holtz Correspondence Stack. I am gonna be doing some Copic coloring, so I'm stamping my image using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink.
All right, so with my images all colored up and cut out, it was time to actually do my collage layering. Now the adhesive that I'm working with is the uh, Distress Collage Medium, and I've used this before, but you could easily use some Mod Podge or some paper uh, perfect adhesive. Anything that's going to stick to your journal page um, would work fine. I probably wouldn't work with uh, the, your dispenser tapes um, because the tape won't give you enough um, adhesive. So definitely work with a wet adhesive to um, put your collage images together. One of the reasons I really like the Distress Collage Medium is not only is it an adhesive for the backside, but you can also um, paint over your images with the adhesive and it will help secure them nicely, um, especially when you have your collage going on. You wanna make sure that your pieces not only are sticking to the back, but that they're not sticking up or curling up. So by adding the Distress Collage Medium over your images, that'll make sure you have nice secure images on your art journal. Now I also wanted to add some color to my paper doll and this is uh, probably the first time that I've used Copic colors on my paper dolls. I will typically use my distress inks but because it was such a small area to color in I wanted to work with a fine tip and my um, Copic colors had that fine tip. Um, I don't have any distress inks, um, the, the ink pens. Um, in my collection um, and typically when I'm working with distress colors I'm using my pads and probably some sort of a watercolor uh, brush but this time I did decide to use my Copic colors and it, and it worked fine. So with my background complete and my images adhered um, it was time to add my sentiment. Now there were a lot of ways I could have gone with a sentiment for a Independence Day layout um, I could have easily just put um, Happy Fourth of July, um, anything, you know, anything to do with patriotism. Um, but I decided to um, stamp out the statement, let freedom ring. Um, I had the bell and of course I had my flag. Um, so I thought that would be a good sentiment for my layout. Um, I don't know about you, but I really, really like this layout. I really love the colors. A lot of my other layouts were um, a little bit muted. You know, I like my brown tones, but I love the colors and the vibrancy of this page. And I really hope that you've enjoyed my process in putting this one together. Um, I did look back through my journal and I think this page so far is my favorite one. Um, so I'm curious in the comments when we get to the end, um, let me know which page so far is your favorite page. I know that this is our seventh month. Um, and I've made seven layouts, so let me know which one is your favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on um, the music just for the final stamping of my um, words, and then I'll be back at the end of the video to close you off. All right, so this pretty much finishes up my July page. I really hope that you've enjoyed it. I've had a lot of fun creating it today. Um, so as always, I will leave a list of all the products that I've used to create the page along with the links to the stores. If you've enjoyed the video, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And of course, feel free to share the video as well. Um, I am almost at my 3000 subscriber mark, so I'm really excited and hopefully we'll do something real special when I hit that milestone. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you head out. And be sure to click on that little bell so you're notified when my new videos are posted. 
And um, as I indicated uh, a few minutes ago, go ahead and leave me a comment. Let me know which page so far is your favorite page. Um, I have seven pages out there, so hopefully you've been following along every month. Um, and I'd love to hear what your favorite page is uh, so far. All right, everybody, thanks so much for stopping by, and we'll see you again next time.